Welcome back to the We Not Odd podcast, where we take stories of resilience and mental health and take the we in wellness and uh, make, make the I in illness turn into a we for wellness. Today, I'm excited to introduce Ryan Phillips. Ryan, what's going on, man? Oh, you know, just another day in paradise and, uh, you know, the new world order. You know, just kicking around, just got out of therapy, uh, three hours of uh, psychotherapy, which I do for uh, to clean out my uh, my nervous system, so to speak, you know, when you've uh, taken on a lot of uh, subconscious programming that uh, doesn't serve you uh, throughout this physical trail, this journey uh, on uh, on uh, the planet called Earth. Uh, there's certain things uh you need to do especially uh you know uh when you've uh, suffered a lot of concussions like myself been misdiagnosed with bipolar told i was i had depression this that yeah yeah, yeah whatever so i mean i'm all, like we, we can go deep into the mental health spectrum um which is to me uh you know very very uh, it's extremely parallel just with the spiritual world however you yeah. define your spirituality is is up to you it's, you know, there's no particular uh, race uh, to, to domination or dominion. Yeah, right, right on. And so we, uh, you've got a, a hell of a story, um, which you filled me in. And we met actually earlier this week, kind of like a law of attraction, as you said. Um, <laughs> it's just meant, just meant to be. I, I just got done, um, you know, riding a bike, a bike trip. I did my first triathlon earlier this year and I rode my bike from, Saratoga to New York City. Um, and then I'm just on Instagram on Monday and I see, you know, a story came across your account and you and I just went back and forth and I was like, dang, this guy, hockey all star, you know, biking across, biked across Canada for, to raise mental health awareness. Um, just been through a ton of stuff in your life that we're going to get into. So I'm just really excited uh, and fortunate to have you on and share your story and then, you know, to help others uh, who may be going through it. So, I don't Excellent. know if you want to yeah, d- dive in or give us well, the start. Uh, I mean, what was extreme, extremely grateful to be uh, on the podcast. And uh, it is all about helping others and mm-hmm. being able to receive help from others as well, which uh, has definitely been, uh, you know, part of my uh, subconscious programming that, uh, you know, didn't serve me. Uh, you know, up until probably when I, when I rode across Canada after doing many, I I did five countries in 2019, all to raise awareness for mental health, which I believe a lot of is to me society illness, which are a lot of labels that are projected upon human beings. And, you know, like we're not allowed to feel sad. We're not allowed to feel emotions. We're feeling off because something happened in our life. Maybe it was a breakup. Maybe it was, you know, something traumatic, something that affected our psyche in a certain way that caused our brain to literally kind of shell up where the amygdala is on the fight or flight, you know, system here. So, you know, the brain being systematic, you know, uh, obviously, you know, we're working out of our prefrontal cortex. You know, when, when we talk about trauma, even, you know, trauma is, is literally, I, I believe it to be a hundred million times worse than, than sometimes a physical wound. You know, uh, the, it, it causes deep, deep emotional uh, distress uh, th- that leads into, you know, suicidal ideation, suicide, period. And especially right now with the world as it is, we we're literally experiencing a world global trauma crisis where yeah. all the traumas from past are coming up. Either it's through isolation, more alcohol consumption, more drug use, you name it. And I've been down the rabbit hole. Uh, I don't know how many rabbit holes there is, but, you know, at the present moment is all we got. I think I'm in about uh, I've been in about infinite rabbit holes in my <laughs> life, but somehow to pure divinity and by the grace of source energy, God, Jesus, Allah, whoever you want to believe your higher power to be something greater than me has always been able to climb out of the rabbit holes and, you know, turn the adversity into something that I believe, um, you know, gives purpose in, in, in my life and hopefully can inspire others. That's yeah. really what it comes down to is the ripple effect of life, just like the ocean. So, uh-huh. If I can cause some sort of wave 
uh, through my my heart, which you know it's it's bled uh, a lot of adversity, <laughs> obviously, and you know no victimization here. I asked for it. I believe you know ask and you shall receive. Um, you know I asked for this. We all we you know we we, we came here to this you know physical reality on planet earth and uh and then we got to figure out how to deviate our way through the experience and you yeah. have to realize that we create our own experiences too through our emotions through the, our thoughts our feelings our actions our words you know everything you know thought is obviously energy so it's it's energy moving at an inconceivably high high rate of vibration so you know when you can actually align that vibration with you say your dominating thoughts just for a period of time you'll see that physical manifestation you know so that's source energy obviously rolling in and through you unindated and then through that you know you're 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 attracting you're vibrating and they say law of attraction law of attraction okay well how they really explain it it's it's magnetics you know it's 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 uh you know, bioenergetics, it's, you know, you, you go into Qigong, you go into all these spiritual practices, yoga. Uh, I mean, it's the, the way we attract certain people, places and things in our life and be guided as an instrument, so to speak, you know, we got to count that moment sacred. So mm -hmm. um, because then you realize that you're much more powerful than you ever gave yourself credit for, you know, the, 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 you either use your brain for you and, and its benefit. <laughs> or it uses you and it's the devil's workshop literally and uh, i've been uh both dark places and i'm not i i still go back and i still fight those demons on a, a, a daily basis especially these days and you know i'm no angel i've made mistakes just like everybody else but i believe that these are days where you know we need to collaborate more and unite and really be there for each other. If somebody needs help, you know, you you try to help them out the best they can, or the best you can. You know, vice versa. You know, like if if we're all one, then why wouldn't we want to help each other? We've done enough destruction to each other already. This this to, to me, this is just like you know how whenever there's a war, it's a world war. So this is just another to me. This is like world war whatever. It's, but the thing is, is it's, it's, an, it's, I think it, it's a war of division, you know, and the division has obviously come through uh, a sickness that was, you know, come out called, I'm not going to name it. I just called the C word. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's caused a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people have taken their life through this massive spiritual shift at the same time. You know, it's, uh, you know, the, the skies look different for everything. People are lo looking at each other different. Um, you know, even through the masks, you can see it in people's eyes. And there's a lot of fear, you know, rippling through the masses right now. And, you know, why wouldn't we be experiencing a lot, all this internal trauma, this it, this internal trauma, and these feelings when, if we're all, you know, divinely connected, centrifically, <laughs> um, you know, we're picking up on other people's energy. That's why at no point in history is it most, so, so important if you want to live and you want to survive and you want to thrive, you have to associate yourself with, with like-minded people and protect your energy as a force field that not, that, so no negative entities can enter that subconscious storehouse. Hmm. You know, so then your heart doesn't get fucked with, right? Yeah, totally. And I, I, I just want to, uh, you know, jump in there. You go back to what you said about, um, you know, you going through all these experiences and how you you took it and you felt it and you turned it around into these positive things that you're doing now with your, your speaking, your TEDx talks, your bike rides, your National Geographic just did a documentary about you, which I was fortunate enough to watch last night. Um, if you want to just kind of take us from the beginning with hockey or kind of walk us through a little bit of your, of your backstory for the listeners. Um, well, I mean, at the end of the day, look, uh, we're, uh, I, I, we're not our name. We're, 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 we're a spiritual being having a human experience, okay? I know that's nothing new for a lot of people to hear, but that's something that I've believed since uh, I had my, uh, I was stopped in my tracks having a soccer game back in elementary school when I was six. I was like, I'm not my body. I'm not, I'm a spirit inside this physical form. 
And I remember telling my mom, I was like, you know, you create your own reality, like at a very young age. Hmm. So it's always kind of like in tune with that, that we become what we think about all day long. Like I think Buddha was the one that first said that. Then it goes on to like Osho, Wayne Dyer, all those kind of guys that are in the, that space of, the, you know, whatever. And um, it was just interesting, you know, like hockey was my, my dream. And I, it became, it was amazing. I had some of the best days of my life playing the game. I lo- all I thought about was hockey, 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 hockey. You, I, I was, I, if I wasn't on the ice, I was with a ball and then we had, you know, street hockey tournaments back in the day when there was kids playing all over the place. We'd have 50 kids outside my parents' place playing ball hockey. The, the time yeah. of my life was amazing. You know, yeah, like I, other parents would like play with too. oranges and just, and like, yeah. it was fun. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, you know, it, then I started taking it a lot more seriously. You know, I had idols like, you know, Wayne Gretzky, Mary, uh, Mary Lemieux were my two favorite guys back growing up. Well, of course. Been. And it's funny because I used to live in Nashville where you are now. It's kind of yeah. cool. So I know Nashville very well. Um, lived in, I lived in Murphy's bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll have to come and visit one of these days. Totally. So, um, you know, hockey was going great. It was going smooth. And, um, I got asked to play junior hockey, which is kind of like the gateway to getting drafted into the national hockey league at yep. 15. And sometimes I wish I would have maybe gone onto that team because the, the coach saw something in me. And I, I was just as skilled at 15 as I was at 17. I really was because I, I, I was I, I had I suffered a bunch of injuries like uh, from 16, 17, then 18, nine kept going in, in junior. A lot of injuries, concussions and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, leading into junior best times of my life. So much fun. Other than the parents getting in with a little bit of the politics, you see all that bullshit. But, you know, then when it gets serious, you know, junior hockey in Canada is taken very serious. Now in the United States, everywhere, hockey's taken serious now. Yeah. I think too serious. You, you become a commodity. Now you're, you know, you got a number on your back. It's like you're a piece of cattle. And yeah. a lot of these coaches, you know, they, and they, they pull a power trips on you. And I was, a, I've always been a sensitive guy, even though, you know, I, I'm, I might not look like, uh, you know, uh, a sensitive guy or whatever that's supposed to look like. I don't know, whatever. But yeah, I, I'm the same way. I was scared shitless going to the dressing yeah. room because the coach was always trying to intimidate us. And if, if, I, the, if the year before that one guy that actually, I was supposed to go to a place called Nanaimo. It's on Vancouver Island. I played for the Nanaimo Clippers at 15. Mm-hmm. And the coach there was very, very kind and talked to my dad very kind. And then I was like, no, no, I just want to stay home. I don't think I'm ready quite yet, Dad, to leave. And then at 16, I left. And unfortunately, I had a coach. I was the youngest guy on the team and didn't play me. Uh, you know, I scored my first game. I think I had three points in my first uh, few, few uh, three games there. But not that it's a big deal. You know, this is past stuff, past, all past. But then he's because I was young. He wanted to like teach me a lesson that I had to like earn my keep kind of thing. Mm. And, you know, even though I'd be the best, best player out there and many of the times I say that humbly, but it's the truth. Yeah. Um, there was some sort of weird connection between him and I, he could sense of like, I think I, that he, I feared him. Um, mm. So he wouldn't play me. And I, you know, I was getting slivers in my butt and uh, you know, got very hurt, you know, watching, what I could, like, I was just, uh, I loved hockey so much and I wanted to be on the ice as much as I could. So get, this is the first time I ever was like sitting on the bench, not getting that opportunity to do what I love. Hmm. I had school on top of that in a new community, having to walk right. to school every day. And then there was, you know, obviously the hazing. I was, I was in the era of the, like the major, major hazing. You know, hmm. a lot of it's come out publicly these days. Um, I'm very, very close friends with friends Sopel who opened up the doorway to uh, the Kyle Beach story that's kind of getting a little bit buried right now, but I know Brent's going to be bringing it to the surface very uh, fairly quickly with, uh, you know, big networks down in the United States and through the medium of film and just media in general. But, uh, you know, this kid Kyle Beach was uh, uh, molested uh, by, uh, you know, uh, one of the staff members of the Chicago Blackhawks in 2010 um you know maybe you'll have brent on the podcast as well and he can tell you the story because the more it gets out there the more you know it'll put things to a uh 
an end. This shit's got to stop. You know, you know, yeah. uh, kids getting abused, kids getting abused verbally, physically, emotionally, all that kind of stuff. And you, you wonder why, you know, so many of these, these athletes turn to substance abuse. And, you know, like, I, I never wanted to get into the booze. I never wanted to get into the booze and, and use. Uh, but next thing I know, it's like to fit in, um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm getting liquor poured down my throat and then I'm into it and I'm barfing and puking all over the place. And then the coach knows I'm drinking and he's hate me because I'm hanging out with the older guys trying to fit in. I mean, I was like, I, I, I didn't know what world I was in. I was, I, I literally what felt like I, like I've been Jedi mind fucked. And you're so and, vulnerable at, at 16, right? You're so, yeah, trying, you know, like you're just, place. Like, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, um, that was a rough start and, but then you keep going and, you know, my, I, I didn't want to let myself down. I didn't want to let my community down. You know, I was, uh, I was, I was told, I was rated to, you know, to be a, you know, you know, to make the national hockey league. That was what I was supposed to do. That was my dream, but it only happens for so many, so, so many guys, certain factors play into that, you know, with, 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 you know, what I just talked about. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I've had a blessed life. I'm here today, to, you know, uh, you know, my purpose is way, way bigger than hockey. I, I know that. And, um, sometimes I forget, um, what this physical apparatus, not my name, but the spirit from within that has done things out of divine service, I believe. And I've done that only from the love of my heart. And I, I think a lot of that too, I'll be straight up is, is because I've been very hard on myself for, uh, things that, you know, like breaking the law, I, you know, going to prison, at uh, a young age for smuggling, you know, the, all the marijuana across the border. And I kept doing it when I got out. I kept yep. doing it. Do you, and yeah, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to just elaborate on, on that part of your yeah. story too, just because that struck me in your documentary film piece about how you kind of just felt like you're in such a place that you, you were, you were just feeling so, so much like you just didn't have much to live for or going on and that you wanted to just keep going back to, to the, uh, to, to smuggling marijuana across the border, like after you spent those 18 months in prison. Well, I'll tell you, it, you know what, um, while I was in prison, I was so pissed off at myself and what I'd thrown away, um, you know, I, I just, I, I resented myself. I, I was, I was angry. I was angry that uh, I was told I was never going to be allowed back down to the United States again to see my, my daughter live down there. And I was just like, holy shit. Like I, there was a turn of events that happened. You know, a door got kicked in at a safe house where the, where, where the, where product was being kept, you know, for shipments and whatnot. And, um, you know, I'm running this crew. I'm a young kid, and it's you know a multi-million dollar business. You know, there's money you know coming back and forth from the border, like millions a, a week. And I'm just a kid, and it's just like obviously, it, it's like how old are you? Your, your young twenties at this at this 19, time. Nineteen. I started wow. at, at nineteen, and then you know twenty, it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And wow. you know, I was playing hockey in the states, so I started meeting more connections down south, and I was just like boom, boom, boom. And then you start getting all these uh, transportation me methods and then you're making more money doing that than hockey. And mm. you feel like you've been kind of wronged by the game, you know, and it was like, wow. you know, the injuries and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I can be making more money than an NHL hockey player just, to, you know, shipping some herb across a, an imaginary line. And so I did. And I found ways, you know, and, uh, you know, different routes across the border through rigs and farms and bushwhacks and logs hollowed out and boats and you name it and kayaks and Zodiacs and, oh, God. Um, but, you know, uh, I got ripped off for about 250 grand of product here in Canada that would be worth over 500,000 at the time in the U.S. And... Uh, that very uh, next day, I was. What happened was the garage got kicked in. That was all locked up, and it had about had the hundred pounds in there. And 
it was an inside job. I had no idea it was an inside job. I, I was like, someone's out to get me. And I had no problems up until this point. I was doing this for quite a while up to this point. And um, what happened was I was in business with a very, very serious, you know, gangster. <laughs> and um, I was like, I got to make this money back or else, you know, he's there's, shit's going to happen. Things are going to go really, really bad. And I think you saw that part in the National Geographic uh, film, which was pure entertainment. But, you know, there's a lot of truth in there, but it's a lot of a lot. It's entertainment. That's National Geographic. I mean, my story is just like it's it's just beginning to yeah. get pulled. I'm just starting to open up about the about how real it actually was, you know, yeah. but, but how unbelievably awesome it was, but how believably dis- unbelievably destructive it was. Like, I mean, it allowed me to have the most amazing life in the world. And, and actually was, I, I was able to provide a service to people afterwards. All that money's gone now. I don't have any marijuana money. I'm, I, I don't like, it's, you know, like all those millions, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that went through my hands. Like, yeah, I mean, I had properties and travel, all this kind of stuff, the mansions, the nice cars and all that kind of stuff. And none of it ever made me happy. It never filled mm. me up inside. It was just money. And, uh, but I had a lust for it at the time. Then you get the disease of more and it's like more and more and more. And then it's never enough. So I did a hundred pounds this week. So now I'm going to do 200 pounds the next week and 300 and 400 and 500. And I'm running a big crew. I got people in, you know, I'm fueling pipelines all through the West Coast. I got New York flying. I got, you know, uh, Chicago, Los Angeles on lockdown with all the biggest markets there. And next thing you know, you're you're you're, you're buying up probably at one point probably 80 percent of the weed in uh, in British Columbia. And I go from like a pretty boy, uh, kind of unknown, uh, unexpected smuggler. To kind of like people know who you are now because you're at the top of the food chain and you know shit happens at that level you know i lost a lot of friends to murder a lot you know a lot overdoses murder and uh, the using and abusing that i did was like i don't even know how i'm alive you know all the mdma all the cocaine you know like the like the way i party i mean i was partying at such a high level i was spending over a hundred thousand dollars a month on just partying which is not normal well i mean what is normal but like like that's just all self-medicating because you're trying to be it's i i took on that identity okay Mm. it's like i'd had the identity of a hockey player gone once i became ryan the weed smuggler i new identity okay got out of that and i was like i have to change my identity but there was a deep deep yearning inside me in my soul that i had to right my wrongs and i've had to do that a lot in my life i know i still do with with with, with a lot of with, with like but most of all it comes down to the relationship that we have with ourselves and have, and the way we treat others and the way we receive other people as well with absolute try, just trying to understand where they come from or where they or where, or what they've been through telling the truth i've lied i've lied lots of my life but I, today in every single way and the truth hurts. It does hurt. But I honestly ha- have to say, because you're uh, saying honestly, blah, 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 but I know I have to be honest with everything that I do or else I'm not that I can't stand back of riding across Cambodia for child sex slavery on three occasions, Vietnam, twice across Cambodia, going across Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, um, and uh you know canada uh on on my bike all for mental health awareness but it was it it was awareness into action it made me feel good too to give back it was i was gonna do the world if if the c word didn't kick in you know get this out of the way and i'll be getting down to the states as soon as possible so i can fly across from uh you know ny to uh over to uh california yeah, I'll do, I'll do a couple of states with you. Why not? Be but rude, um, be rude if you didn't. Yeah, right on. Um, what, 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 just to, sorry, just to jump in there. What what was that final moment of you know you're you're living this party life, you're smuggling yeah. hundreds of pounds a week. What are, what 
was it when you finally stopped and was like, all right, deep down inside, you knew. When it, deep down yeah. inside, I just felt really shitty about myself. Yeah. I felt, uh, uh, yeah. It, it was like, and I, I, I teeter back and forth, like get out of it and then be back into it all of a sudden. And mm. like, I'd have all these millions put away and then all of a sudden they're gone. And I was like, okay, I got to get, I do, because I was good at it. I was good at making connections, but I could have done that in any business. Yeah. You know, it, 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 cause it's like the bit business in general is the law of vibration. It's, it's your magnetic attraction. It's like, you are your business. You know, you, you take a look at someone's uh, uh, success, it, however you design, define success. To me, it's the pr progressive realization of something worthy. Okay. So now it doesn't have to be money, but if you really, really pursue your passion, your passion, something will fall on your lap that I believe is divinely guided by God or your higher power, whoever you want to make it, that will provide for you because you'll, you're never going to be in that state of lack mind where you have nothing and mm -hmm. money starts to just kind of vibrate into your experience. It's never yours. None of that money was ever mine. I created, it was all an experience that just moved. It all just moved the experience. You know, so the money came through me and I had access for it for, for, for that amount of time that allowed me to do whatever I wanted to do. But I was never supposed to actually have all that money because that money wasn't made through legal channels. So any marijuana money that I've ed ever made, any money that people have made with me doing marijuana smuggling, it was illegal. It was, they weren't supposed to have that money. Yeah. And I, I have to take full accountability. And so do they, that they knew what they were doing. And, you know, it just started feeling like shit. So, you know, the drugs, the booze, all the excessiveness, I started going to AA. Uh, I, I knew I had a problem, not with, with, with just, I had a problem with Ryan, like who I am. Yeah. And I, I was, I, you know, I, I was hit with a spiritual awakening many many times in my life have been hit. i was we're all hit with a spiritual awakening the minute we're born <laughs> you know but you know this one was profound it nailed me and i was you know, i was i was messed up i was i was on a lot of stuff i was on, on a uh, probably you know 30 caps of m over a four-day period bender probably you know like ripping probably ripped through a texas mickey and a half who knows you know, and not doing the what 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 is healthy. Put it that way, and you know, just spending money like it's like like it, not respecting money. You know, like just throwing it away because it wasn't earned the right way. And um, there was like a a shot kind of went through me, and it was I, I started going to AA, and I started picking up spiritual principles principles. You know, like the spirituality always shines through the minute you open your heart up. You know, you just, because we're, we're born so-called spiritualized or whatever, you know, I think that's a totally overused word. We're all, we're all, we're, we are all spiritual. Everything's spiritual because everything comes through thought. Everything comes through nature. Everything comes from one substance. Just like there's no competition. You start making a competition and it a competition. Then the next thing you know, it's like you're screwed because at the end of the day, the only competition you can ever really be in is with yourself. All right. You know, like it's, it's a waste of energy. It's a, it's a waste of energy. So, you know, anyways, I, I, I mean, I've just, I found the most love in giving back, uh, but it's how you give back, giving back, not expecting anything in return. And, you know, I didn't ride across Canada so I could be king of, of uh, riding across Canada or anything like that. I did yeah. it because I was told that I was bipolar Later on, I found out that it was concussions and mm -hmm. who knows, maybe I am bipolar. Maybe you are too. Uh, you know, um, I don't drink today. I don't do drugs. So, yep. um, am I an alcoholic? Uh, maybe I, I was at one time drinking alcoholically, but I like to say I had a problem with alcohol. I, I don't go to meetings anymore. I don't, I'm sober and uh, I, I connect with sober people. I don't drink my circle's small. And I talked to guys like Brent Sopel, <laughs> who's, yeah. who's a, a wonderful human being that ho whose identity was hockey for a while. And now we're mm -hmm. kicking off uh, something really cool with yellow English and uh, Brent's bro, Noah, I'm just starting to get to know him. 
and you know we're doing you know health and wellness and, and, and apparel and infinite possibilities and Brent Scott's foundation you know I encourage everybody to look on YouTube and type in Brent Sopel documentary and he's got a beautiful story and so you know his his story is going to be I mean look look him up look, look him up what he's done yeah. how he's exposed and he's a sober guy too he's five and a half years sober he, he's an open book wow. I think he gets asked to do about 27 million podcasts a week. Uh, but, you know, he drinks six Red Bulls a day. So, um, you know, uh, he'd probably be happy to come on on your podcast. Yeah, that would be fun. I, I mean, tell, him I said, tell him his brother said so. <laughs> I will, yeah. Yeah, I followed his career quite a bit. And it, it's cool, mm-hmm. like, since oh, I've so you, know, so, you, you know who he is? Oh, you, oh, yeah. know, you know who Brent so Yeah, he was on, okay. he was on the Black, Blackhawks, right? Yeah. Okay. So I guess people do know who he is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I grew up playing hockey and oh, I'm, just I, I call it. Balls. I'm busting balls. I'm busting balls. I, Cause you know uh, what? Maybe he'll hear this. Maybe he'll <laughs> actually listen to this, this one. Maybe I'll fire it over to him. I don't think he's ever heard any of my podcasts. He, he knows my life. Our life's a podcast. When we get onto a, on, on a, on a phone call together, it should be on record because it, <laughs> our, our phone calls are podcasts for Christ's sakes. Yeah. That's awesome. It seems like there's a lot of, um, just, I get him on the phone right now. <laughs> there's uh, what I was I was gonna say is there's a lot of uh, hockey guys that have gone through stuff like like you and I and, oh. and Eric Cusson and Theo Flurry and I was on uh, Riley Shan's podcast recently. We this is for everybody. Like if you, even if you go on the Instagram, it's like we are all here to change the world. You know, mm-hmm. people say yeah, I'm here to change the world. No, uh, 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 collectively, yeah. and you can put this in. We're yeah, well, all here. Here. We're, we're, we're all no, here to make a change in the world. No matter what, you are changing the world right this second. Between right. this conversation that you and I are having, there, there's a transference of energy between you and I that is making a positive difference in the world if we talk about positive things, if you look at it in a positive way. So when I look at a guy like Brent Sopel and I know his heart, I know him that in that way that I believe in him, I can, I, I have so much faith in him and all you got to do is watch his documentary and you see the guy's heart and you're just like, holy shit, how can you not want to like, like support this guy? And, yeah. you know, um, I'm just, I, I, I could give a shit that Brent Sobel, you know, played one NHL game. I, I, I care about Brent as Brent. He's, mm. he's, he's a, he's, he's a beautiful human being and, you know, I, I go to the wall for him. But, uh, you know, those are the kind of people that you want in your life. You know, the ones that have been through the most are usually the ones that they can give you the most. They have the most wisdom, man, because it's lived experience. And, yeah. you know, you can't That's have certain conversations with certain people. That's right. The thing. Yeah. You know, I like, feel like the, the experience so, that I went through personally has just made me way yeah. more deeper and empathetic and allows me to connect with great guys like you and Eric Cusson and, you know, maybe you'll have you know, to. Eric, okay, so Eric's a great yeah. guy. Eric's yeah, such so. a good guy. Yeah, we're, we, uh, we talked the other day and, uh, you know, hopefully the stars will align and, um, you know, we're, we're going to be doing some things in Canada and, uh, you know, um, my manager is in uh, New Jersey, so he's close to Eric and we have a lot, a lots of common friends and, so it's, it's just a matter of time before law of attraction worked and him and I got introduced uh, by Brent. Brent and Eric are great friends. And, yeah. uh, you know, um, there's just so much we can do together. There is. Yeah, and, a lot of, in hockey, but in general, like, there just, just seems like there's it's a lot. It's not about mental. hockey. It's about mental mm-hmm. health. Everything's mental health right. right now because it all starts upstairs. And then the body is just a byproduct of, product of mind. You know, yeah. the body follows mind. You know, that's why, like, people, when they get depressed, you know, we throw our, the blankets over top of, of our heads. I do it. I do it. Yeah. I, I get to, I get depressed. And I just have to remember that I, when I do get depressed, I have to, you know, ask myself, why am I feeling like this? And mm-hmm. then I have to tell, tell myself, it's okay that you feel like this. And then I need to take some time to be with myself. And then like, you know, ask for the answers and you usually it doesn't take that long these days, sometimes longer than others. You have your good days. You have your bad days. Some days are half real messed up. It's, I mean, it's living in the unpredictability of life. 
mm-hmm. at, the, at the uncomfortability. And when you can become, uh, you know, like comfortable in your uncomfortability, then you got life by the horns and you go for the ride, you know, literally. <laughs> and yeah. it feels good. But when you're stagnant in stagnant energy and, and you know, and when, you know, when that stagnant energy gets trapped in your body and your cells, that's why I do, do psychotherapy. It cleans up my nervous system. My nervous mm. system has been absolutely rocked with trauma. And if I don't deal with that core trauma that led me into like my using and abusing in the first place, then I'm nothing but a shell of a man and I can't be of service to anybody. Mm. So that's that's huge. It's like you, you got to help yourself before you can help other people. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have to be careful when you go to AA meetings that you don't take on a lot of their entities as well, because a lot of those people are, you know, either they've been in there. I, this is no knock against AA people in general. But it, I, I found especially in, you know, NA meetings, AA meetings, you know, any meeting in general that like when you're in a group setting with people, uh, you you have to be very careful not to take on other people's stuff. And that's the thing that, I mean, I, I know at one point in my life, you know, I literally, I felt, I was like, I've taken the world on my back and, mm-hmm. you know, I got to take some of these pianos off or else I'm going to kill myself. Like, this is ridiculous. And I don't mean like commit suicide. I mean, like, I'm, I'm just going to shut down. And so, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I'm in a way kind of grateful. I'm actually really grateful always even in the darkest steps, I'm grateful because I'm still breathing. And I, I always say this to everybody. If you're breathing, you're here for a purpose. If uh, Every single one of you, if, even if you've done bad things in your life, we've all done so-called bad things in our life. Like she said, like we, we're none of us, we're not, we're not perfect. We're in, perfectly imperfect, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, just, it, it, it's being able to own up to that shit and be completely honest with yourself. And that's when like the floodgates of everything that you want in the universe start opening up for you. And so you can have whatever you want. You just got to ask and you have to be so definite about it and then mix emotion into your definiteness. And then the next thing you know, you've created it. And it's like before with me, it was money. It was all about money. You know, money, sending weed, angry, hockey went bad, blah, blah, blah. Now it's about abundance and being rich is completely different things. The mm-hmm. only reason I desire more abundance in my life and abundant life is so I can be more of service. Cause when I die, it's all going to be going back into the world again. It's all going to be moving in infinitely into the world it, to, to my, to my daughter. Mm-hmm. And when she, you know, like I am here to leave a legacy. Mm-hmm. I believe we all are because, you know, at the end of the day, when we're gone, you know, we have nothing but an experience to take with us. And I mean, I don't remember half of what I did today. I'm just here right now, like yeah. in, this, in this presence, in this divine presence. So like, you know, this is all good. This is cool. I, I love that. What, um, what kind of advice or what can you say to somebody who's, you know, either young in their 20s or going through stuff and maybe not living in that present moment, dealing with depression or anxiety? And do you have any things you specific things that you do that people can take away absolutely so here here, we are being absolutely overstimulated as a human race right now with technology i i think less screen time on your phone not comparing yourself to people other people on instagram or facebook or whatever the heck social media pages you're on uh physical exercise meditation yoga whatever works for you get a sweat in Take time for self-introspection. Surround yourself with good people. Um, eat healthy. You know, like you know, be regimented in your own regimen, and know when the candle's starting to kind of burn out a little bit, and you're feeling a bit off and down, that it's okay, and you need yeah, to chill perfect. out and breathe. It's an important one. You got to give time mm-hmm. for you to re- to recalibrate the battery so you can be you. If you, if you can't, then you're just like, you're, you're like a slug in the mud. And, you know, look, this, my heart bleeds for these kids these days because there's, the amount of children that are suffering from anxiety and depression, and I see it on a daily basis. My daughter 
was using methamphetamines for almost four years. She's a new mother. She's almost 22. She's been sober for almost 10 months. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. And, you know, nobody sees that in the National Geographic movie. No one's, you know, no one sees that in Re when Return to Happiness was out. They see all the good stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but beneath, you know, like the entertainment stuff of my life that's been out, put out there publicly, they have to realize that I have a daughter right now who's taking parenting classes and trying to get that daughter because she's in a foster parent home right now. Uh, I haven't been able to travel because of the whole COVID deal. So she doesn't have her dad with, uh, with her and you know, it's, it's a go. So it's like, you know, um, my, the best therapy for me is, is it, it has to be human connection. And just like this right now, to me, this is, yeah. a, all this is, is a therapy session. I know. I feel like I my therapy session to another therapy session that have, just happens to be a podcast. Yeah. And I come alive sometimes on these things too, right? So it, yeah, it I love me. it. Uh, well, thank you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I really do. I have to because we're all one. Yeah. And if I don't love myself, I'm no good to anyone. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it'd be really cool here in Canada too, and you know, even down in the states eventually. You know, I'd I'd love to connect with. Uh, I know you know Theo's doing his thing. He's got a podcast. I'd love to do some public speaking with Theron and obviously Brent and I will be doing our things together. And, you know, it's Eric's a super busy guy. It's putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. At the, yeah. look, at the end of the day, what I would love to see with the mental health spectrum here is yeah. that it's not a popularity contest. It's not like yeah. who could be the mental health guy. I know the mental health guy, whatever. Look, I wrote across Canada. Yeah. For mental health. Am I the mental health guy? No. Can I speak on the topic of mental health? Yes. From my experience. But it's not a popularity con contest at all. Uh, my platform is a platform of love. That's it. Pure love. Nothing more, nothing less. Because if I start like hating myself and other people, and this is what I've learned in the last like little while here even, like where it's come mm -hmm. more into my, my awareness, so to speak, is that I always knew that. But what I've seen with like the masses when I walk out my door and I, and I see the, and I feel, and I pick up on the energy of the people is that they're not loving themselves some, uh, as, as much as they, they deserve air. We all deserve love. Love is the eternal elixir. That's it. And it's, it's so easy yet. It's the hardest damn thing in the world. So she had a fucked up childhood <laughs> yeah. or, or been abused or gone to prison. You know, no victimization here at all, you know, because I've been told him, you know, I play a victim here once in a while, but that's the truth, you know, and that, yeah. and, and the truth does hurt, you know, but I created that. I did. So anyways, yeah, that's all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's so true about like, you, either love me or hate me. you pick, <laughs> pick one. I don't, I, I don't yeah. care either way. I still love you. <laughs> yeah. Love you. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, I was just going to say this. Weird pictures and I'll actually pick up your phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just so true about like, you know, everybody, all of us are kind of doing our own mental health things in our own way that we just love to do and love to put this energy out to the world to help, help everyone. And it's no, uh, no popularity contest because we're all doing it for the right reasons. And, uh, yeah, it's just, and it's it's not staying in your, your own head for too long. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I'm not in my head because I'm having a conversation with you who's actually yeah. in the understanding of like some of the stuff that I've been through. And I'm right. in the understanding of some of the stuff that you've been through as well, just from some of the names that you've you, you've said, like Eric and Theron and whatnot. Like these are all guys, you know, if you have an understanding of what they've gone through, then you have an understanding of what so many of us have gone through. And so many of us is like, is the world, especially right now, these kids. You know, it's like the next generation. We need these kids more now than ever. Because, you know, I, I don't know how to operate an iPad that great or some of these gadgets or whatever. It's mm -hmm. technology deal and e-commerce and whatever, you know, the way I did yeah. business back in the day was the way I did business back in the day. And, you know, some of it was illegal, some of it was not. And, you know, but, you know, these are days when I believe that age doesn't matter. Age does not matter at all. We have, it's all about community, unity, binding together as one, 
Yeah. One of the most powerful things I did since I started Let's Chat about it was working with the Boys and Girls Club in Albany about teaching them, like, I put on mental health education classes, and we talked about depression, and we talked about yeah. anxiety, yeah. And pharmaceuticals, and the food that goes into it, and it's just amazing to think, you know, how much they gain from those sessions and the education uh, that we provided to the students, and it's yeah. Well, I mean, so I, I had absolutely no idea. Same, yeah. I, you know, Eric actually uh, made a post the other day. Uh, I had absolutely no clue that uh, you know the, the USA makes up five percent of the population, and sixty-five percent of the uh, big pharma is you know chomped down by Americans. I had no clue. That, those are those numbers are astronomical to me. It, they do not make sense. Sixty-five percent of all big pharma is getting is getting swallowed. Uh, I mean, by unnatural substances that probably could be rectified. Probably, actually, I know they could. Um, you know, uh, yeah. look. A lot of us need something to stabilize us to get us on the right track. But I think yeah, we can lead ourselves off this and lead a life of fulfillment with the energy that we create for ourselves and the energy that we are surrounded by. And it, it's 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 not simple, but it is simple. We just make it hard on, our, on ourselves. And I, I said it even today in therapy. I get in the way of myself all the time. I might we're our own biggest enemies, you know, those internal battles with ourselves. Holy shit, I'm not good enough. I suck, yeah. you know, like those, that comes through my aware sometimes. What am I doing? Why did I do this? Uh, you know what though? That's past. That's all living in the past. It's not being like excited about the future. It's being mm -hmm. bogged down by my trauma. So if I start to define myself by my trauma, then I'm, I'm, I'm literally creating a drama that I don't want. I should get, you know, create a t-shirt company called trauma drama. <laughs> That's what everybody's talking about these days. Yeah. Um, God bless them all. God bless us all because I don't want, I, I, I've been told I have complex PTSD. Yeah, I, I, I call it complex life experience mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for myself. Although the wounds hurt, they do. Uh, I, if, I, if I were to come on here and say that I don't hurt and I don't cry my eyes out, mm -hmm. I, I don't allow, you know, people to come into my life now that I trust and I can tell my story too because I need to because I never have it really have completely opened up about my, myself before to a lot of people I've been very closed off and it's just and, it, and you know like there's reasons why I've shut down like that and it's all mental health shit and you know um, being able to talk about your stuff is the most important thing there I mean, that, that, that's like, but talk to somebody that you're relatable to that will actually listen to you from the heart and give you something like some coping mechanism, you know, some sort of coping mechanism. If you're suffering from anxiety, breathing techniques, I'm just learning how to start to breathe properly because mm -hmm. I'm working with a yoga instructor, you know, like I, I, there's no proper way to meditate, you know, like walking on the treadmill is a form of meditation contemplative yeah <laughs> you know so um is there anything else you'd like to get into yeah i was just gonna say last you you kind of touched on sharing your story um so i'll make this the last one and then we can wrap up but what uh what was that like when you first shared kind of your story in a public forum or um and kind of how how did that feel um I felt that I, it was just, it was time to get honest with myself. Um, you know, that all started when I got, came out of the, out of the, you know, the drug business and, you know, I went back in a few times, why not in and out, in and out. And, um, I don't know what, what was the point of my life when what, I, I didn't quite get that. Just when you finally kind of came out and opened up about, um, your mental health struggles. I, well, I mean, I wrote a book. I wrote a okay. book uh, that's on Amazon. Um, it's called Ryan's Journey. You just type it in. It's on Amazon. Um, you know, and I, I just, you know, I made that film. I never went to film school or anything like that. And um, I was just like, let's just run and gun this. Make it all about giving back and happiness. Hmm. And we went over to Southeast Asia and, you know, rode across Cambodia and showed like, you know, it was horrendous, obviously. See, child sex slavery is a really shitty 
awful, decrepit business that's you know all over the world, not just Cambodia. But my eyes were open to that world and mm. these young girls being like, you know, persecuted and you know, sexually abused and whatnot. And it just, you know, ripped my heart apart. And I mean, there's just no that's that that that's you know, I've never that question you just asked me just it just brings back so many emotions, you know, because I realized I've been doing this for quite some time, talking about my story, but not to its full, you know, to its fullness. You know, like now I can empty the spout because marijuana is completely like accepted and legalized in almost every state, all of Canada, yeah. and it's totally accepted now as a healing agency. Um, whether it's your choice to use it, it's up to you. But you know, um, yeah. Um, I guess, I the, guess the, was, the, the question comes from. From my experience, I, you know, smoked synthetic marijuana and was hospitalized and kind of went through a lot of leaves of absence through college. But throughout those like five steps, depersonalization kind of stuff, like yeah, being I guess I good. guess what I'm saying is yeah, throughout those five, six years I kind of felt like I was hiding that uh, those experiences from my peers and from my friends and um, I finally wrote a blog about my experience and kind of what I went through and great detail and then I got a lot of uh, feedback and people being like yo I went through that through and then other people looking up to me and coming to me for for things and it kind of just felt like I was a new person almost and that this secret that I had was was no longer and I was living my true self um, so I was wondering in your experience kind of if you had a similar moment when you shared a defining moment when I just wanted to change my life just uh, if, if you had a similar experience when you shared your story. You know what? It was just a place of being vulnerable. Yeah. But it it's like, you know what? Like, I, I, you got one life on this planet. So why not just spill your guts so if it can help people? If your adversities yeah. can help people, then why not try your best just to help others? Because you never know who you can help just through your voice or your actions really and like you haven't heard me really talk about riding across canada much you haven't heard me talking about these rides or even smuggling all this weed and stuff like that it's more about humanity it's not about what i did those are that's all past stuff too so it's about what i'm going to do in the future and keep it moving forward and then getting other people to do you know similar things you know like uh, like for what's next you know, what's, what's next? It's like, you know, when I go to bed tonight, you know, I, I, I usually, you know, I visualize, I connect to my higher self and I ask, you know, uh, you know, a power greater than me, which I define as God. And what, you know, what we, how can I serve you? How can I serve you tomorrow? When, when, I, when I, if I'm blessed enough to wake up, you know, because every day we're reborn and, you know, when, and then when at first, even if I'm feeling off, First thing in the morning, I get anxiety usually. First thing in the morning, I am like anxiety, like riot. And I, I gotta I calm myself down. I you know I get up, up and I'm just like, oh I like get up before you like, it gets worse. You get kind of moving. But like I don't know. It's just like one of those things, man. You just uh, you, you just I then I, I just I ask for serenity. You know, God grant me serenity. Accept things like cannot change the courage to change the things I can and wasn't know the difference and I got a buddy of mine Mo who lives in the interior of British Columbia he's like 68 35 years sober fires me off a you know daily reflections I read that wow. and, you know and so I read my daily but he also put something else in there usually for like for personal growth I'm not talking about like a big Tony Robbins conference I'm talking about like you know real spiritual growth I'm not saying that he's not real spiritual growth I'm talking about like you know ancient wisdom coming back from way back you know that like you get attuned to you know vibrationally it kind of changes your state where you it kind of gives you more faith faith in people you know because you know that there's somebody that you know who's afar that can actually ignite you know something inside you like a charge you know that um that when you have people that believe in you you know don't you feel better yeah when people actually absolutely. like i believe in you man like i actually really really believe in you like I, yeah. I, I want it right now. I want to believe in everybody. I do yeah. because, like, the more you put that out there, people will actually start believing in themselves. Mm -hmm. So really, at this, at the end of the day, my message in this podcast, you know, to close it out or whatever, 
you can ask me any more questions. It's like, I encourage you just like, no matter what, write it on your goddamn mirror. I believe in myself. I can do anything. Anything is possible. The in infinite possibilities that I can do is uh, limitless. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> from, this is coming from an ex-con. Yeah. <laughs> Full of dreams. That's yeah, that's beautiful, man. I, I appreciate you coming on and sharing this, and I think that's an excellent way to end it.